Well, that was fun. A little quick. I don't think the finals are going to be that fast, though. I'm F. Dot. Got to introduce myself. These guys need no introduction. First of all, say hello to the captain of Astral Authority, El Chacho. Say hi to the fans. What's that? Sure. And then, of course, on my left side, representing Europe, it's going to be a rival. Say hi. Hey. Very excited, clearly. I think your minds are on the game, though. So I'll ask you guys each, uh, what was it like? What was the road like? How did you get here in the finals? Um, coming out of third seed and slacking off a little bit at the end of our season, it feels good to be in the finals right now. All right. And then on this side, what was your journey like to get here? So we had a free split and then a free semifinal. Well, that's how we got here. How are we going home? Who's winning? He's not gonna have a free finals, I'll tell you that much. It's probably a 3-0. And how about you? Who's winning? Europe, baby. All right, well, let's give it up for our captains. We'll send them back and we'll get the finals started. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say hi to our commentators. It's Agro and his friend. Here's my friend. His name's Anatoly. Thank you so much, FDOT. And of course, you heard from Brochacho and Rapio there, the two captains for our finals teams. That's right, rival, the European team, has shaken the demons here, Tolly, and, and finally won a set up against NA. And that's a very important set to win because it was against Soar Gaming earlier on yesterday. That's the third time they, they faced each other in a LAN environment. And you know what they say, third time's the charm. Finally, Team Rival getting into a finals. And that's true. And I mean, the, we've seen this before with teams where they have a little bit that, that just hump they have to get up and over. Rival's finally done it. It's taken all of season three. They couldn't find a set victory against, up NA, against NA. Season four wasn't working, but now it is. Could this be that watershed moment? Do you think that once they break free of the, the chains of oppression of NA, they, they might be able to take this final up against Astral Authority as you, well? You know, it's very difficult for Team Rival here currently because Astral Authority are such a highly regarded console team. They won the spring split earlier on, and they defeated the world defending champions, Obey Alliance. Well, they've got a tough task ahead of them. Wolves in the solo lane for Astral Authority, one of the star player. I mean, look, let's get this out of the way now. Every player on Astral Authority is a star caliber player. That's Chaotic Purpose in the jungle. Then you've got Kovi in that mid lane. Has a pretty diverse god pool, totally. As well as Elbro Chacho in that support role. We haven't really seen too much of his Ymir play, but that's definitely somewhere in the darkness of that playbook. He could bring it out at any given moment. In that dual lane, though, you can't forget about Transonics and his fidget spinner. Does he have a snack there? He's, he's ready to go. He's That's all ready. I know. He, Trans is a dude who likes to have a lot of fun, but more than having fun, it's about winning for him. He's all about that W. On the other side, team rival in the finals, Gnome in that solo lane, and then Rapio, you heard from him earlier on, the captain and in the jungle, one of the more dynamic players in Europe, without a doubt. Two definitely aggressive frontliners, but in that mid lane, it's going to be Watson version 3.0. Did quite a lot of work there in his set. Earlier on against Sword Gaming, that support role, Jacob HL made some things happen. I've been very impressed with Jacob HL's play. Can't wait to see him go up against Brochacho. And then finally, the newest addition to team rival, Dobson, in that Hunter role. It was atonement for a long time. The addition to this guy, he knows the NA side pretty well, and he's had a really good debut for Rival. Absolutely. Everyone from Rival did a great job yesterday against Sword Gaming. Now it's time to see if they can extend what they did yesterday to another North American tender. Such strong strengths coming out of Astral Authority. Here we go. Picks and bans for game number one. We got a best of five between these two teams, so buckle in because you're about to see some excellent Smite console league action. Astral Authority, no hesitation, immediately banning away Soul from Watson. I mean, we saw what he was able to do with that goddess, just creating so much AOE pressure between that stellar burst and the burst damage of that supernova. It's really easy to confirm a lot of these objectives. Odin Zeus, though, from Rival. Quick pick and man phase. We're already into the first pick, and Susano is the selection here for Chaotic Purpose in that jungle. Rival, immediately two snap picks, and it's back-to-back -back warriors, Osiris and Robin. This is going to be the frontline penetrators we were talking about between both Rapio and Gnome. They like to be able to be very aggressive. It's going to make things a little bit more tricky now for Kovi and Transonics to be safe. We're going to see a relatively defensive guardian, potentially, from El Brochacho. I'm expecting either Geb or Kepri. Could be either way. Brochacho has that defensive god pool as well as the, uh, the aggressive options. 
Don't be surprised if you see him go the Ymir or the Ares, something along those lines. But it is going to be the Ganesh and the Changa for Kobe in the mid lane. And that's a great self healer. Changa has that immunity frames in the second ability, has a great AoE stun if every member of Rival align correctly in the corridors. And that's going to make jungle fights a little bit more tricky for Rival. They're going to have to really wait for that ultimate of Changa before they commit. Geb, the final pick before the second ban phase. That's going to be for Jacob HL, of course. No, uh, no Geb Walker solo lane for the console rival squad. So they ban away Kronos from that man on your screen, Transonics. The Morgan ban from Astral Authority, uh, definitely a key one, because Watson played that pretty well yesterday. Especially considering they don't want to necessarily give some options to Rival either. The, another Ganesh here with a Geb, that's a lot of space control for one team fight. And that's a smart ban. Two respect bans by rival Kronos for Transonics. The other one still in that duo lane, but that's at El Brochacho. The Ymir, or excuse me, he already has the Ganesh. That's actually at Wolves in that solo lane who likes to play that Guardian from time to time. It's going to be Hu Yi here for Dobson. Not only a strong pick for him, but one of Transonics' favorites as well. Why do you expect Wolves to go here? Do you expect a Loki, or is he going to stick to his Warriors? Because right now, the only standard Warrior I'm seeing remaining is the Bologna, but that's not something that he normally goes to. Yeah, it could be Bologna, could be Erlong Shen, maybe. We've seen a little bit of that True. start to creep up back into the solo lane, though Cyrus does have a pretty positive matchup in that because he can shut down the healing coming out of the ultimate. Wolves Godpool has been banned out pretty heavily here between the Sun Wukong, taken away by Astral Authority themselves, and then the Odin and the Emir on the side of Rival. Not only that, they still need another Hunter pick for Transonics, who he is taking off the table here. Could see a potential Jing Wei, depending on the direction he wants to go to. Ram was banned by Astral Authority, not gonna have that one. His playbook, though, is still pretty diverse. The Kronos ban was a very smart one from Rival because Transonics was doing work with that one. Chalk for Wolves and Kernanos for Transonics. Chalk a god that we don't see a whole lot of Tolly, but I suppose as we mentioned with all these warriors banned out, that was the best option for Wolves and Hades in the mid lane here for Watson. It's a nice idea because now you have two specific beads burners from Rival. You have the Geb and the Hades. These two complement each other very well and without any sort of purification beads, the Suns from the Hu Yi is just gonna create a lot of slowing area control around these jungle fights. Silence also pretty important in the matchup up against Susano and Ganesh for that matter. You can silence Ganesh out of his own silence if he's not aiming it at you. So that Hades pick for Watson there's a pretty tanky lineup for Rival. Are you concerned about their damage output at all? Their damage output, it's gonna be very evident in the mid game. As the game progresses though, if they don't build an early enough lead, I could see them start to falter off a little bit. It's gonna be very important for Astral Authority though to start grouping up in the mid stages and utilizing that Changa sustain. And the other side, Astral Authority's damage output also not really jumping off the page for me. I mean, Changa, excellent at that poke, but Poke into warriors isn't quite as relevant as it is into the squishier assassins that you're seeing in the jungle. Especially with a Geb support from Rival, it's going to be able to mitigate some of the damage from Astral Authority, not to mention Hades could potentially look to find some healing of his own. Here we go, into game, the finals between Astral Authority and Team Rival. Best of five between these two teams. The first console final that we probably ever had between NA and Europe, considering that Europe usually struggles in these cross-region matchups. Rival have not been successful in the past, but this time in DreamHack Valencia, they found that 2-0 victory yesterday against Sword Gaming, and if now's, now's the best time for them to show what they really have in store against North America. The question remains is, does Europe dominate all of Smite, or just the PC side of things? Can Rival extend this to the console world? Astral Authority, NA's only remaining team, and has been since uh, Sora was eliminated yesterday. On the PC side of things, of course, NA got eliminated day one. No, no one made it to the semifinals from North America. But that's enough about that side. We're talking about AA and Rival as teams. Pretty standard starts, though. Rapio's in the mid lane with Watson, whereas it's Brochacho in the mid lane. We're leaving uh, Karananos alone in lane. And look what Astral Authority are doing in that speed buff, grouped up, negating any sort of farm in that soul lane to start off. And look where Watson is going alongside Rapio. They're going to their speed, but they're not going to find it this time. But the, instead of trying to continue that invade and go for the enemy blue buff, it's going to be the fire elementals, the neutral objective for Chaotic Purpose and Wolves. They gave up that entire wave on the right-hand side. Might get two archers worth of XP, but the tower should have cleaned up 
all that gold. And they're still going to hit level two off of the wave anyway. Not too far behind here. They can still fight in this secondary wave around the one minute mark, allowing them the pressure that they need with the mobility provided. Transonics picked up the minis off of the purple buff and is still here because the rotation seems to be coming from that mid lane. But what Rival have done is working very nicely. Transonics, I don't think, has gotten a duo lane, duo lane wave quite yet. Ooh, that purple buff that will be secured by Transonics. Not on the mark was that shockwave coming out of Jacob HL. And meanwhile, Astral Authority, they weren't really concerned about helping out Transonics in the purple buff. Instead, they wanted to really maximize their farm by securing those Oracle Harpies. This has been a great start for Transonics in that duel lane. Up in net worth, up in XP total, and he's going to be soloing these waves as Gnome. Taking a little bit of pressure from Chaotic Purpose. Going to be put down to about half HP. KP got just about as good as he gave, but not too worried about it, could have be able to sustain nicely with the Bumpus Mask. That was an Osiris that did have his passive fully stacked up. 16% physical damage mitigation, and without that passive, would have took a little bit more damage than he probably would have liked, and this is a good timing to find some poke onto the soul lane while the Osiris is still level three, before he gets any sort of defensive items online. Rochacho has returned to the duo lane, leaving Kobe alone in the mid lane now, as Chaotic Purpose is gonna join up with him as Dobson and Transonics. Start to poke each other down a little bit. Two aggressive players in this duo lane that I know Dobson has been excited about this matchup for quite some time. And Transonics is excited about any matchup he can get. He's always looking for the action here. Sitting at level four now, one level above Dobson. He's putting him in a comfortable position here as El Chacho finally has made a little bit of a shift in attention into that duo lane, helping out Transonics to be on the aggressive side of things. The neutral objective, the fire elementals again, going Astral Authority's way, Gnome being pushed underneath his tower, and that's not something that you're used to seeing for that Osiris in lane. No, not at all. I think it was the whole start that Astral Authority did by invading the speed buff. It, if you shut down the jungler, you in turn technically also slightly shut down the soul laner and the mid lane, and that's a great idea that Astral Authority already implemented in the first game of the set. I mean, Osiris is the type of god we talk about all the time with how dominant he's been, that if you can shut down his early game, he becomes a lot less useful in the mid to late. But Chalk's the same way as in the mid lane. Watson finds the ultimate and forces out the beads from Kobe, but Chaotic Purpose trying to turn it around. Wolves down to one HP, but Kobe is going to be first blood. Rival get the first blood, but Chaotic Purpose does find Rome Watson. is here, though. Lord of the Afterlife trying to chase down Chaotic Purpose. The Tether Stun is going to prevent the dash, the root from Rapio. Second kill for Team Rival. Two for one in the dual lane. Brochacho and Transonics drop some ults of their own, but don't find any kills for it. Rival end up on top in that mid lane brawl. Great rotation from Gnome just to secure that secondary kill. And it was a great turnaround from Watson to be able to get off the heel. It seemed that he dashed in to use that Pillar of Agony very aggressively against Kobe. And that's why the turnaround happened. However, the heal coming out of the Hades turned everything around. You damage the enemy and you heal yourself, preventing Watson from getting first blooded. The heal on the Hades at this stage of the game is better than the healer coming out of Chang'a. I mean, Chang'a obviously gonna be leveling that first ability, so you're not gonna be leveling the Moonlit Waltz, so you're not really worried about the, uh, the, the heal coming out of the third ability either, so. Kobe ends up not being quite as impactful as Watson, and that's what you expect at this stage in the game, though. I mean, Chunga obviously not as strong at minute three as something like Hades. The one good thing, though, about that Moonlit Wallace hold, I thought that Watson taking a little bit of poke, but I like the fact that he's healing before he dashes forward, trying to maximize that option. However, as I was talking about the Moonlight Waltz, despite it being a low number in the heal category, the anti-healing is a flat number at all ranks. That's true, so Watson not gonna be able to get as much of a heal uh, if he's hit by that third ability, so keep an eye on that little interaction in the mid lane between two gods that really haven't seen too much of in mid as of late. No, not at all in the soul lane. The Wolves, surprisingly, getting that one level lead despite no making that rotation and finding the assist. Maximizing his farm potential is something that Wolves has been doing since the start of his console career, despite him playing a lot of these aggressive warriors, or sometimes whenever he plays these sneaky Lokis. He likes to play some assassins from time to time whenever Wolves was first bursting onto the console scene. I remember it was a lot of Ao Kuang solo during Ao Kuang's dominance really across the entire map, not only in the jungle, but Wolves can really play it all there. And I just don't know, for me, totally, Chalk is not a character that Wolves 
it has an easy time carrying on, and Wolves can absolutely carry a game given the right circumstances. Whenever you're against an Osiris, the last thing you want to do is be aggressive against that god, and something that Shock is excelling at is being able to clear from a distance. You just throw the axe at the wave, and if you take any sort of poke damage in return, you're just going to get the rain dance. And not only that, you never have to worry about getting invaded on your blue buff or having to secure your own blue buff anyway, because as long as you utilize the Chalk passive, by getting five stacks after each in hand, you get a free cast ability on the next one. Rapio gets pulled and Watson goes dashing in. There's a Cataclysm, but Kobe's caught, but he throws out a waxing moon. There comes the Dharmic Pillars from Brochacho, but it's KP getting bursted down. Kobe finds Watson and he escapes towards his tower. Transonic's rotation proves fruitful as he finds the kill on to Rapio. A two for one evens the kill total at three apiece. Perfect rotation from Transonics, finding one assist and a kill to follow up. Dobson cannot get there at the same rate, but trying to find something in return. Nice little juke from Transonics. Dobson now is going to have to retreat. Luckily, right around the corner is Jacob HL in case he needs to throw a gap shield, but Transonics, he's not done chasing. Dobson drops the ult. It does force the beads out of Transonics, but Brochacho was stuck inside there. Jacob HL with the credit trans. Going with the 1v2, he's looking for it. Trans finds one. Trans going for number two. Dobson boxing it out. He gets the double kill with an assist from Chaotic Purpose. Great rotation from the jungler out of Astral Authority. And this is the confidence that you need out of your hunter. Transonics making the rotation happen. Dobson cannot respond in kind. It was a nice effort and attempt. And I thought for a moment there that Team Rival were going to get the better end of that one because of how overextended we saw Brochacho. Transonics is feeling it. This is a dude who always tries to turn up for LAN. He loves this type of environment. He loves being the center of attention, like most hunters do. And that type of play where Brochacho sacrifices himself, Trans still stands there boxing and just waiting for that slight bit of assist. And honestly, I don't know if he needed it. And that's for the greater good. If you're ever going to look at one player to sacrifice themselves, for the most part, it's going to be your support player. And Brochacho, sitting at level 8, allows Transonics to get this two-level lead over Dobson. Big ult out of Watson, catches three. Trans gets the dash up in time, but Brochacho is still fighting. Locks Watson right near the Dharmic Pillars, and he's going to fall to the hand of Kobe. Now Dobson in trouble. The Typhoon actually focused down onto Jacob HL, even though Dobson used his jump already. Rapio making the rotation, but not on the mark with any of his abilities, unfortunately. And now this gives a small window of an opportunity for Astral Authority to invade this purple buff. Jacob is very low. Rapio is very healthy, but it's Jacob HL. The shield is not good enough. Chaotic Purpose just obliterates him, and Astral Authority gets the purple buff anyways, so Rival doesn't get anything out of trying to contest it. In fact, they lose more than they probably bargained for. Solo lane, we're still seeing a passive farm fest between Gnome and Wolves. We're going to see them probably start rotating around that level 12 mark once they start picking up that second relic, and that's going to be available to them. But in this duel lane, it's just been nonstop action here. Seven kills for Astral Authority, four for Team Rival. Transonics up about 800 gold over Dobson at this stage of the game as Kobe takes a big burst of damage. Brochacho silencing out Rapio to prevent the overhead kick or Mystic Rush. Kobe sitting at level 10, two levels up over Watson, who has not had the start he wanted. Despite some pretty impactful ultimates, 0-3-2 at this stage is not a great start. No, not at all, especially considering it was Kobe that fell first, and Watson followed suit immediately after the fact. And this is only going to get better for Kobe because the higher level he is, that's when he's going to start maxing out that heal as his second ability. He already maxed out his first ability to get the maximized poke potential. And the way that Team Rival have been positioning themselves around the jungle, they've been clumped up quite a bit. And some of these waxing moons are going to be thrown out there. The good news for Rival is that Rapio has had an excellent start. He's up 400 gold over Chaotic Purpose. And Rapio, one of the more momentum-based players in the SCL, no doubt about it. The SCL as a whole, I think, is a little bit more momentum-based than the SPL, but Rapio in particular really starts to struggle if he doesn't get a good start. Jacob HL pulled in and controlled. He's going to be able to get out of danger. No, he will not. The Typhoon cleans him up. Kobe runs away from the ultimate from Rapio as Watson goes dashing in to four members. Kobe's going to fall to the Pillar of Agony and Chaotic Purpose falling low as well. He's not done yet. The Storm Kata and the Jet Stream with the damage over time. Connecting on the second death for Team Rival. Great sacrifice from Kobe. You know, somebody had to die there and the mid laner is going to be taking the fall this time around. Rapio making a nice little clean on play. Dobson shows his face in the mid lane as Transonics head back to base. It opened up the door for Dobson to make the rotation, but 
by the time he got there, the fight was already over. Jacob HL, so uh, so intimidated by, I should say, by the by the CC chain capability of Astral Authority, actually went Purification Beads as his first relic in the support role. I almost thought that Astral Authority overcommitted to this Geb support, only sitting at level 9. They threw the Typhoon, the Dharmic Pillars, I think Waxing Moon as well. And without those three ultimates, Astral Authority were still able to clean up Another kill onto Watson after the fact, getting a two for one in the soul lane, however. Chaotic Purpose and Rapio are making the presence felt. Gnome jumps up and over that storm call, but no one there as Chaotic Purpose had already escaped that extra mobility that Susano gains when his abilities are on cooldown. So impactful in terms of being that slippery assassin. Back into base now is Chaotic Purpose, finishing off that Brawler's Beast stick and that two for one in the mid lane earlier on was only with that tier two mace. So now with this extra anti-healing, it's gonna be an easier opportunity to pick off Watson. Rochacho two levels up over Jacob HL as again, the purple buff stripped away from rival. Watson with control in that lane, or excuse me, that's Wolves. Is it? Now the Dharma Pillars come down in the enemy back RPs. Dobson drops the Suns to try and get all of Astral Authority in a way, and it does so successfully. So two ultimates in exchange for one, Rival end up on top. However, Rival still get their own red buff in turn, but it seems that Astral Authority are not done yet. They're gonna zone out on the right-hand side while the Gold Fury gets Leash, Transonics, and Kobe doing a good job cutting it back and forth, and it's so Five low. Said Astral Authority get it, but Arapio still jumped in. Rival no commit after that, though. Dobson just went back the lane to begin farming. I feel like there's a slight miscommunication between Team Rival. Surely they must have known that Astral was going for that early goal here. Now, to their credit, though, it's not the worst case scenario to be in. You're only down 3,000 gold, approaching the 13 minute mark. It's still a little bit of a lead that you can come back into. Either way, Astral Authority has the lead at this stage of the game, and you mentioned it totally, the, the damage for Rival's composition is a little bit lacking come late game, so they really do need to start picking it up fairly soon because Astral Authority's late game damage significantly better. The mid game, I think, is worse because Chonga isn't going to compare to Hades still at that stage. Rapio still going to be pretty effective. And once Osiris starts rotating into these team fights, that could be the big difference maker that Rival need. I'd like to see Gnome start to make some rotations pretty soon here. But we were talking about the Chang'e here, but it's actually Watson that got poked out so many times in this game thus far. Already having four deaths, it seems that there's nothing really to worry about on Kobe's side of thing. Astral Authority are doing a good job objectively, though. They got the gold here earlier on. They almost secured this portal demon up until Rapio showed his face. On the run is Rapio. He's going to use the purification beat, but still controlled. And before he get out, he gets killed by Chaotic Purpose. Big ultimate out of Jacob HL, but a bigger out of Watson. Sets up the double lord of the afterlife from Gnome. The Suns as well, but Astral Authority still standing strong. Gnome finally gonna clean up Rochacho, but Rapio and Watson already dead. Gnome soon to join him. Kovey with the credit. Three kills for the mid laner for Astral Authority, who are now doubling team rival in kills, 12 to six. El Brochacho yet again, sacrificing himself for the greater good. Last time it was a two for one, this time slightly better, three for one, plus that tier one tower in the solo lane, extending their lead a little slightly, transitioning towards this portal beaming, adding 750 gold to boot. What do you think the problem is for rival right now? Why are they, they seem to be getting some good ultimates. I mean, that was a double Hades ult into a double Osiris ult into a triple Hu Yi ult, and they only find one kill. The problem is also that the Changa is now at the prime level that she needs to start healing up these targets. Maxing out that Moonlight Walls is going to allow her to be able to keep the team fight rolling around. Geb here at level 10 doesn't have the knockup and the shield fully maxed out, so he's not going to be able to keep up with the damage and the shield. We're actually seeing the shield sitting at level 4 here, not fully maxed out. Almost there, though. Just one more level. Kobe also has that Lotus Crown now to give some extra physical protection to everyone that he heals. Going to be a big impact there for Astral Authority's entire team, not just the mid laner, is AA again, focusing on stripping away these duo lane buffs. And it's just all about the space control out of Astral Authority. These Dharmic Pillars coming out of El Brochacho is just so annoying to deal with, and it's gonna be very tricky for Watson to position himself with that Pillar of Agony, because honestly, if he uses that, then Brochacho can just drop his ultimate right on top of that, doing so much damage over time. Despite Watson's one in five scoreline, he's basically top of the player damage charts, Wolves just surpassed him now. He's gotten multiple big ultimates off, but the, I don't know. I just feel like the draft is a little... It isn't very cohesive, I think, is my main takeaway. The, the follow-up off of the Hades ult, who ye ult solid, but 
not enough burst to really make an impact. Oh, once the Huyi gets the Fatalis, potentially, will start chasing down some of these targets and gets to that later portion of the game. A nice little pull onto Jacob HL, but that shield's gonna negate a lot of that damage. And I'm looking at the experience gap here between a lot of these players. I'm looking at the Hunters specifically, that three-level gap, and already a Fatalis on the side of Transonics. Not only that, Transonics is over 2,000 gold up over Dobson right now. That's why you see him able to go for that luxury the fatality pole. early on. Both Gnome and Rapio forced to use their ultimates to get away, and no ultimates used by Astral Authority. There's an ultimate onto Jacob HL, a Typhoon. Gonna knock him up. Pretty big commit onto the Gebbas. He used the Purification Beats and finds a four-man Cataclysm. Trying to find the kill. Nice waxing Moon, and it's also gonna connect onto Watson to prevent any sort of follow-up as Wolves is gonna zone two in the solo lane. Transonic still being that big old bully in the dual lane, taking advantage of Dobson. Wolves just creating that wall, not letting anyone from rival past. And Chaotic Prep is going to pick up some extra farm here in the solo lane. No portal demon. Astral Authority already got that one as they've controlled this game heavily through the first 16 minutes. Watson trying to find a way to defend this tier two tower. He's gonna get the mini Nagro and the nice heal. Pillar of Agony is gonna force out the Aegis from Chaotic Purpose. He has the speed buff, trying to get out of dodge here against Rapio. Will do so successfully. No ultimate for the Robin, and KP is gonna get away. He had to use both of his relics in that last engagement, though, between the Purification Beads earlier on, and there the Aegis. So a little bit of a window for Rival if they could find him once more, but Susano, we talk about it all the time, probably the most slippery character in Smite. Maybe Giannis up above up, up, up. him? Giannis is definitely one of them highly contested mobile gods, but out of the jungle role, if you're not talking about global pressure, you have to be talking about Susano, the way the passive works. As long as there's one ability on cooldown, you're getting 4% extra movement speed. And not only that, you have two movement abilities between your Storm Kata on the third strike. It gives you that dash, and then the jet stream just being able to cover a lot of ground. Transonics, no fear, but probably should be a little bit afraid. Good Aegis takes a lot, a lot of that damage away. Brochacho throws out the silence, hitting multiple members but Trans still standing strong because here comes the cavalry. Rapio up and over the wall but can't quite find it. Jacob HL gets gobbled up by that Typhoon and the rest of Rival just backs up. Rival cannot fight on the left side of the map because Transonics is just too big. At this point, yeah, he's sitting at level 17. He has so many items completed already, so much mobility with that Fatalis, working on either a chin size or the Executioner. The gold separation between these two hunters is just so much already, not even the 20 minute mark. In that last engagement, not only was Rival outnumbered, but their positioning was just all over the place. We saw Rapio jump over the purple buff wall, trying to find the kill onto Transonics, but all he had to do was just dash into the safety of his team, and there goes that. The jungler out of rival was just non existent in that last encounter. Wolves getting chased down by Known, stunned out by the Judgment Tether, but even with Rapio, Watson, and Jacob Bichel and Toll, this is a level 17 chalk. It'll be pretty difficult to find that kill, but rival is attempting it, even with Kobe here to support his solo laner. Wolves has to self-sustain Kobe, providing the AoE sustain to follow suit, just casually 1v3ing the rest of Rival. And there's no anti-heal here for Team Rival yet. I mean, we're 19 minutes in. I understand Rival's behind, but you're up against the Changa. You're up against the, the Chalk. I mean, yeah, there is a cursed Ankh on the side of Rival, but is that really enough? I mean, we're going to have to see a lot of a clutch ultimate here from Gnome on the Lord of the Afterlife, and the Cursed Ankh has to be well positioned here. We're seeing the Brawler's Beast Stick already from Chaotic Purpose very early on to this game, and he has a lot of mobility with his ab abilities, rather, and his items, having this Wing Blade and the Masamune. It's gonna be very difficult to lock down the Susano. I just, I'm very surprised that Rapio didn't go Brawlers in this matchup. Yes, Gladiator Shield very good on Robin, but I think I would have rather seen a second item Brawlers than into the Gladiator Shield for a quick three item power spike. Either way, Rival's got to find something different to do because it's, again, Astral Authority on the objective. Portal Demon falls low, but the fight is what AA wants, and the fight is what they're going to get. Three-man knockup from that Typhoon. Huge ultimate out of Rapio. Actually hits four. The Suns come raining down. Chaotic Purpose is separated from the rest of the team as Watson drops the Pillar waxing of Agony. Moon. But that Waxing Moon is massive. Trans finds one. All of Rival, the rest of them after Jacob HL fall, 
somehow is able to escape, but AA, again, just controlling these team fights. All the AOE damage jumped in that small little corridor, and two members lined up with that hot waxing moon coming out of Kovi. That's something that Rival have to be a little bit more mindful about. We saw the disengage coming out of Gnome once the Dharmic Pillars drop, and then the re-engage from Rapio after trying to chase out some of Astral Authority, but it just wasn't enough. Everyone else was just too far separated. Another Tier 1 tower goes down. That means all three T1s that are red for Rival are in the grave. Another 500 gold for Astral Authority. They're up over that 10,000 gold mark now, and experience difference even worse. It's massive, over 15,000, and this is getting really dicey for Team Rival because this is the point when teams can start forcing some fire giants here. Portal Demon going the way of Astral Authority. They're going to be able to take that objective closer towards the late game buff, start dropping some wards here, controlling some more space, even have enough time to grab this blue buff for Wolves. Just farming up all of these extra little things on the map because Gold Fury's down, Portal Demon just went away, you heard that go away there. And Fire Giant certainly on the table here for Astral Authority, but with this tier two tower being this low, Tully, don't be surprised if Astral Authority just wants to guarantee that 1,500 gold and make it that much harder for Rival to escape. It makes sense as to why Astral Authority are he not hesitating, but being very patient, rather, because Rival can't be the ones to start the fire shot, but they're going to have to try to defend this tier two. Transonics escapes into the jungle. Rapio follows him, but Brochacho's there to support his hunter. The box is going, actually, Rival's way, and that engagement is Watson finds a three-man ult in the lane. Transonics still on the run, as is the rest of Astral Authority. Kobe, Wolves, KP, all very low, but Rival just can't quite seal the deal. A good defense, Kobe's Kobe still on the run. He got slowed a little bit. Nice little sounds from Brochacho, trying to dish out some more damage as KP. Well, the ricochet is not on the mark from Dobson. Nice blink from Rapio. Gonna find the slow onto two members, but because he's that low, he has to peel it back. He didn't find the root on anybody from Astral Authority, and a clean disengage. They're gonna rely a lot of the sustain here from Kobe to get back into the thick of things. Look at where Transonics has gone all the way to the left side of the map, picking up the enemy red as Rapio still getting chased down between the two frontliners, Wolves and Brochacho. Don't want to let slow. him go. What a slow gap there. But once he got into that second part of his rollout, you get that CC immunity. You can't get stopped. Look at how far up these two frontliners have gone all the way back to the tier two. Dobson and Gnome coming wrapping around. But here comes Chaotic Purpose. Big damage out of him, but now he's on the run as the two warriors, Gnome and Rapio, chasing him down. Uh, Aegis is going to buy him a little bit of time, but he's going to get rooted into place, waiting on his cooldowns to be able to escape the clutches out of the speed buff, out of Rapio's Robin dashing through him, and here comes two more members from Astral Authority. He's going to force out the Mystic Rush towards the Fire Giant. Dharmic Pillars is going to slow him down. KP with the jet stream, not enough space to find the pull. Speed buff was enough. To get Rapio out of danger there. Transonic still all by himself. He actually got that tier two and left during that time. So another 1500 gold for Astral Authority. You can make that 3k in total is now only one tower defending rival's base still stands. And when I was talking about what Astral Authority was doing two minutes ago by not going for the fire giant, it was a nice idea because there's no way team rival can do the fire giant themselves. They're patiently getting these tier two towers while they still can, extending their gold lead beyond that 13,000 mark, actually 15 and a half. Not even 25 minutes into the game here, and Fire Giant is definitely going to be the next point of contention once Transonics gets some more mana, finishes off another item here. Transonics had a lot of PvP engagements in the early game. He took the 2v1, he was fighting consistently. The last three minutes or so, he decided, I'm, I'm going PvE for a while, guys. He split pushes the left, he steals away the enemy red. He goes to the mid lane a little bit, then he solves the Gold Fury, getting Astral Authority a little bit more gold, trying to finish off some power items. And talk about a power item, Trans just finished his entire build at the 24 minute mark with a Blood Forge. As a hunter, that's almost unheard of, honestly. I think after that two for one in Astral's favor once Brochacho sacrificed himself, was almost a turning point for Transonics to get that two level lead over Dobson and start making the rotations happen. And these aren't, this isn't a cheap build either, Tolly. I mean, normally when you see a, a build be finished this quickly, 
It's a lot of cheap items. I mean, you look at what Wolves has gone for, very cheap items across the board, but Chin Size, Blood Forge, Fatalis, all above that 2,700 gold mark really speaks to Transonic's level of gold that he's had in this game. Is now he's looking for the Fire Giant. No one from Rival seems too keen. Getting in there. Not oh, up, though. Hell. Astral Authority get the Fire Giant, and now they're looking for the fight. Transonics is low, however, is able to dash out of that Pillar of Agony as Kobe finishes off Watson. Raphael gets touched up by Chaotic Purpose, and Gnome is in the middle of three, but it's three fed carries. Team Rival already losing three on their side. Make that four once Jacob falls as well. Only Dobson remaining, and look where he is. He's all the way by that right side. Phoenix, Astral Authority, the North American console team is gonna win game number one. An F6 surrender vote comes through from Rival, and totally in a best of five series in a game that was that far out of reach. I don't know about you, but I don't have a problem with that. No, not at all. You know, sweep that one under the rug, go back to the drawing board and look for other ways to approach game number two because that Osiris Robin just was not enough arrival to get an early game lead. Astral Authority shut that down from the get-go by being able to strip away that speed buff. I mean, and on the other side of the map, Transonic's got all that solo farm at the beginning of the game. He starts at back harpies, goes to red, steals away the purple, all of that, gets all that solo farm, and then that double kill by the Gold Fury when he was about level nine. I mean, what else can you say about Astral Authority's Hunter? I mean, let's take a look at what Transonics actually did in that last game. Once he made this early rotation before Dobson, he found an assist here onto Watson, then he found a kill with a Wild Hunt onto Rapio, and that's gonna, that actually allowed more farming potential for Chaotic Purpose. And this is when Dobson tried to make that rotation happen. Transonics was forced to back on out, but Brochacho sacrificed himself for this play. And But guess what? Transonics, he got a little bit of help here at the end. He, he did. Chaotic Purpose shows up just in case. I mean, this was an excellent fight. And honestly, you can't really fault Dobson. Most of the autos were hitting there. It was just that Kernanos in that sort of area where you're close up, using that passive, the heavy glaive, to get a little bit of extra damage. That's true. Once you're at melee range, despite being a physical hunter, your melee range heavy glaive is going to do an extra 20 or 25% extra damage, and that's nothing to scoff at. Even at that level 8, level 9 marker, allowing him to go for that 2 for 1 play, it was just no looking back for Transonics after that point. Well, Rival didn't really have the game 1 they wanted. I mean, a couple things did go well for them. Watson was consistently getting big ultimates, but he was dying so quickly afterwards and was just set behind so early. Honestly, if Watson just avoids one or two deaths in the early game and then continues to get those three-man ults, that could have been a big turning point for Rival. But that's the one problem with Hades. You do so much damage. Despite having four deaths at one point in the game, he was nearing the top of the player damage charts. Only Wolves was above him, but he died after, actually, Kobe died, right? So first blood was to Kobe, yeah. and then Watson died immediately after the fact. So he didn't really take advantage of that first blood. He was always around the same pacing of Kobe. And as a Hades player, you really want to be able to take advantage of a Changa before she starts maxing out that heal. Astral Authority, they get what they wanted in game number one. Susano with the first pick. I was talking to Brochacho before this set, and he laid out a, a type of draft that they wanted to go for, and. Honestly, that was completely different for what they actually got in game one, and I think that that's something to take away from Astral Authority and something that I always notice about their sets is that their drafting phase, their adaptability is always very impressive. I mean, they are the spring split champions in the console scene for a reason. They not only can play up to the best of them, but their playbook is just so diverse. They can flip any amount of pages that they wanted, Then they got a strategy for almost any team out there. And despite not playing against Team Rival in the online portion of the SCL, it seems that they're still ready. Rival on the other side is their first loss here at DreamHack Valencia. They found the 2-0 victory over Soar. How well could they respond to the adversity of falling behind in this best of five? I think that there's going to be some very important adjustments here, specifically for Rapio. You can't allow Chaotic Purpose any sort of free farm potential, as well as trying to make sure that Transonics doesn't...